thể nhiều tạo được báo chỉ và quyền lớn từ người lớn Dẫu ai bước đi sang phố thu đã trở lại Ít mong sự gợi nào Which was Perhaps Tuy chọn chỗ xoay 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 Three times, so it's a theoretical situation. Full time with the Epic Creative. We've been working with Google for a bit ten years. Uh, I'd like to thank all the supporters and sponsors of the Google Cloud Foundation Board. So, for the goals for today, is being ready to update your site to Google 11. Your custom module to Drupal 11 and your Drupal module to Drupal 11 if you're supporting any Drupal modules. I mean, this needs separately because they can all be done in separate stages. You don't have to do them at the same time. You do have to do them in the opposite order that I've written them here. But, yeah, pretty good first. So, Drupal 11 was launched August 1st. About two weeks and a new version of both, Learn Point Zero Point Run got released. So Google Learn is great. It's got update dependencies, there's risk of breakages there, but mostly it's the same as Google 10.3. Yeah. The uh, low use modules are removed, so you may need to require the contrary versions of them, actions UI, activity tracker, book, form, statistics. Sure, it does require PHP 8.3 instead of being just PHP 8.3 support in which people can point to is and to So, Google is the same feature as Google 10.3. The state cache was introduced in Google 10.3, it's now required in Google 11. So if you have a lot of usage of this data, you really need to make changes for that. We also have the super user access policy, which I'm really extremely pleased that user one is no longer always guaranteed to have super user privileges, which was a terrible security flaw that was understandable 20 years ago. It modern day, not a great system. Uh, but it, it's supported until June 2025, which means you have time to upgrade to Google Live. I encourage everyone to get in the process as soon as possible, but have time is not a matter of you have to do this now or in three months you're done. But wait, you or your clients may say, I don't have time to update. What about dependencies? What about stability? Those are all valid questions. They should not hold you up. They are valid questions, but they should not make you stop. So, in terms of dependency, where should you at? Every single top 30 module has a Google Legends supporting release, except for Webforms. Webforms has a development version that is marked with Google Legends compatible. Hopefully, it will have a release soon. I would like to have a lot more than 19 to 20 percent module being Google 11 compatible in two weeks. I admit, I have not actually got all my computer modules Google 11 compatible. I have a very good excuse, but also, I'm talking about this, I have no excuse. So, if your problem is timing, do it incrementally. Deploy Google 10.3 now. Google 10.3, you have to upgrade to before you upgrade to Google 11, just like with Google 9, you have to upgrade to Google 9.5 before you upgrade to Google 10. Two, reduce code load. 
only take this updates on to what you look at point three in the So if you have to update all the way to Google 8, you have to upgrade to top of Google 8, top of Google 9, top of Google 10, which is really 10.3, and then at a final point that like Google Lab update. You got work? Do you do a PhD 8.3 update? Probably won't be a big deal if they didn't have a long way to break the changes. Have more time? Update the data version. Google 11 does require some updated database versions. There are options if, like, you want to host that doesn't provide the updated database version, there are different solutions. For example, the uh, MySQL 5 project module, but extends on the old version. Remove those depreciated four modules so that you don't have to do a manual database update to get rid of them. If you can still have more time, you don't have really time to actually upgrade to Google Lab. Upgrade your custom modules. They can be 99% Google Lab compatible without worrying about actually changing the major version. There's the only real risk of not being able to be compatible is a group. Major depending on symphony or to version. So, like, you have time. You have a link over here for Google 10.3. The plan currently is Google 10.4 is getting released and it is supported until Google 12 is released. You have time. Do it right. Don't take yourself to have an emergency roll back. Don't stay at the link on Saturday. Don't get up early on Sunday. Take your time. Do it right. But yeah, get to the whole thing with three items, you don't know when. Get well tested at this point. It's stable. It's fully supported in PHP 8.3. If you're there, you're somewhat three half and three quarters the way to Google 11. So, Google 11, your requirements that you have Google 10.3, that you have a local environment with PHP 8.3 and some supported database. I have the versions here. Uh, one note about Google Lem, it's removed support for the that uh, web server from Microsoft, the access server. I'm not displeased about that. I have client requirements that led to a lot of data because it was officially supported, but I would say it's not well supported by Google Core. And we officially recommend this Composer 2.7.7, that's the security release of Composer. So you should be updating to that anyways for all your purposes. So just to say, you're now at the stage where you're actually getting ready to update. You need to make sure that those depreciated modules are on or use the current version if you need to. Now, at Composer, that's a plugin by MacLearn, which lets you basically ignore virtual dependencies on computer modules if the computer module is not officially supported with 11, but there's a patch that you either know works or you want to try it locally and see if it works for you. So, you have custom code, you got options, you have tools to say what the status of your site is, including both the contract and your whole environment. Your upgrade status, which is a single group module on Drupal.org, which provides both a UI in the Drupal interface and the CLI. Personally, I mostly use the CLI because I've been doing programming for a while and I started programming mostly on the command line, so I just keep on doing that. But yours are great. They let you share information in an easily readable way, regardless of the audience. We have Rector and Rector UI. The Rector actually can make a lot of your code changes for you if you have code changes that you need to make. And the UI does provide a wrapper around it. Uh, Acquia continues to host documentation about what status of projects are for Google Learning. They are also technically still hosting information 
jobs, access to projects, and the your workspace, what you will tell them that I have learned that I have a lot of time since I assume if anyone is using it, it's all that you will tell them I have. So we operate to pay to pay for three, we upgrade custom modules and themes, and go for foreign control. So, page eight for three. Pretty simple, depending on your environment. You hopefully have tooling that just changes a single variable because infrastructure as code is great. You change your constraint and compose of JSON if necessary. So, vector, it actually lets you update your code automatically for page eight or three in many cases. It does not cover every single case. Not all the suggestions are ones I would actually say are necessary. For example, there's a new function, a new annotation in PHPA with the override annotation example is right here. So the override just means that that function is intended to override in the parent class. That actually sounds like, well, yeah, so, that's what we do in all of our functions. Consider, however, if this function was, for example, titled public function get titles. It would no longer do anything because that's not the parent function. If you have the override in there, page people will tell you this is not overriding anything. Red alert. Either the upstream that your parent is changed when you made a typo. It's totally not required. It could be useful. I have really hard, made a hard decision on that. I'm going to start using it because it's now a core function of the PHP 8.3, but it's definitely not a requirement. So, the upgrade status module shows information about all of your custom modules and includes the information that Vector would provide plus a few other things that Vector does not do. For example, Vector doesn't update your version strings in the input or analyze. Hopefully everyone who has written custom code, code can upgrade those themselves, but regardless, Vector won't do that for you. Upgrade status will tell you that they are correct and that you need to update them. And here's the exact word that they use for saying that this is not compatible. The current value is based on the right action in the file. So if you then run the upgrade status module, which you can shorten to us a a for analyze, and then type the project name into the command line, you get the same information in the command line. I will make one note if you're using and switching back and forth between the vector and upgrade status module. Command line for vector requires the file path. Command line for upgrade status requires the module or the machine name. So it's very easy to accidentally type one or the other and then it just points you. You may no more exist with that name or no files on the path. It's not a, it doesn't do any harm. That's very apparent. So if you run Vector on a new module and there's nothing to be done that it knows about, I should clarify, it just tells you nice green Vector is out. Uh, this is using an example of the Kindred module I maintain. I saw this test, we don't use this Kindred module. This Kindred module is many years old. I'm anti-slideshow, but I started maintaining it years ago before I became a new slideshow, so I still maintain it a little bit. Sometimes the suggestions are quite happy. Like, personally, I find the newer format for instead of having to be complicated, instead just say, if it's now, give it value. Much more real. So, you upgraded your custom code. We 
Be here for me. Now it's time to change those stories and values and compose. So, any references to the floor, you need to upgrade to 11.0, or if you have short percentages, 11.0.0, you can find it after your version, you can find the current 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 version, so that I can write a composer update at a later date and just go straight to the next version without having to change things. But yeah, that's definitely a standard issue. Uh, we also want to upgrade Brush to 13, and then we want to either if we can write a composer at a later and change any major versions for the trip, or you can just write a composer at a See what it spits out. If you write it today, you are going to have messages. It is a very, very small site. Sometimes decoding composer messages can be hard because it spits out uh, two pages worth of text when you read online. For example, all this actually is saying is that people classy which is the control version of the old classic theme, does not support to put it up. It seems to me it should be possible to output that without three hundred lines, but we are not that way. Maybe someone should do that, but I'm actually not trying to propose it that way right now. <laughs> so, I was concerned that the other room did not let me be near my computer, so I could not do this. But with this room, we are switching screens. So here's my console. So, it is a computer that people have used all to them because of Google Glass. This is a small site. Of mine. So, we can just start making the changes. Do not think about having to hold it. I'm using my hand and it's down. Yeah. I'll hold it. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, we have our composer file here. I just updated, the only thing I did to this composer file today was update the 11 here from 10 and the 11 here from 10. I will note specifically that I did not put anything else that I talked about yet, so that we can have it work totally lost. So, I talked about using and balance the right page. Composer link. You have to have a currently installed composer file to add this project, which is a slight noise if you've got any changes to your composer file that might make it not run. Then you have to convert the changes and install this. It is a composer plugin, so you have to say yes, you trust it. And now that we have installed that, I will go back to my editor and change the version on the Google. But my cursor might spot it be slightly better. And update brush. So now if depending on your personal safety level and such, you can run compose update or you can run compose update Drupal dash W to minimize that 
give this volume of things that are being updated by the good people that are doing with all those dependencies, generally speaking, for major versions, I would say. I accept the risk. Let's go full ahead. So, now we're back to the point where Google Classy cannot be installed. I put what I did in the comment 
there so that I can go six months later and do something with this project. I should check in on my patch there and see if I need to work on getting that further approved or I don't I have an easy link to see what the resolution of that ticket can be moved without waiting to signal that patch on our reply. I can just go to the link. So we now have the patch and added classy. So we will find the composer update again. And see what composer that spits out for us. It's thinking that could be good. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> so, you may note Drupal Classy is still mentioned here. But as I say, the composed output is not in a great output. Its an actual complaint is Drupal View Slideshow. My own mind, you are talking about <laughs> So now we know that that is also needing to be added to the allow list. For right now, I'm not going to bother looking at the patch. Having this latch not work is not going to break the site for our purposes today. <laughs> I have a working, but I really, oh, I, I, I would actually prefer to remove it. I probably could, I probably should. Uh, this particular site is an extremely small site. It's a, one of my personal sites instead of an agency site. It's for my dad's construction business. I have basically 100% control of the site. I could remove it. <laughs> as long as he can add content every year or two, he doesn't care. Year two is probably over emphasizing how confident is edited. So now we still have Classy mentioned, but there's a new module mentioned, Drupal Matomo. If you're not familiar with that, it's an open source alternative to Google Analytics. You can self host it. So in my opinion, it's much better for not sharing all of your data with the tech giants of the world. Of course, then you have to securely host it, so that does ask other questions. Depending on your IDE, you may automatically get commas in circulated into your composer.json. If you do, it's handy. If you don't, you just have to follow Jason's step. And now, we wait for the person to think about it. Oh, I hate to say this, but this is also a module I've made <laughs> <laughs> I would also say you should not use to add giant aggregates on Drupal 10 or Drupal 11 at this time. It was great in Drupal 8 and Drupal 9. The original version for Drupal 7 is even better, but Drupal 10 has 100% rebound to the asset aggregation system and it entirely no longer is relevant. I've been thinking about it. There are ways that the Drupal 10 asset aggregation can be removed. There's probably going to be a Drupal Analytics service, but that's not going to be anything for sure. And it will require actually some significant architectural decision making instead of just an upgrade process. It will uh, definitely be a great market for an upgrade from Adlet 6 to Adlet 7. This is a small set, as I say. If you are updating this week, the next two weeks, you are definitely 100% going to be experiencing 
significant composer errors. The job grading in a month, I would say the likelihood is the top two modules will be all compatible. Six months, I expect that most people will have very smooth upgrade experiences, which is why I am emphasizing upgrade to PHP 8.3, upgrade to Google 10.3, be ready for it, upgrade your custom code. This is not Race. You can create this as an airplane. We're, we're honorable for the long haul, I hope. So just keep updating every whatever cycle you decide on and make an improvement at that time. Personally, for my personal site, I do monthly updates, many people do quarterly updates, and then most people have their different policy if there's a major security version. But currently, any security updates to Google will be for Google 10.3 as well as Google 11, so we don't have to stress about this. Well, we're going to adding this next module. Does anyone have any questions? Can you, will you speak a little bit more about my SQL 8? Uh, yeah. So, personally, I use MariahDB predominantly. Uh, MySQL 8 gives me most cases a uh, copy replacement for earlier versions of MySQL. It is not backwards compatible, but your database will just work if you buy a copy Uh Same for MariahDB. Not backwards compatible, the latest version, but it is fully forward compatible. So, do you want to test everything well before you deploy that database update since it is not backwards compatible? But you definitely not worry about major faults from the database update itself. Oh, and look at that, we have another module that's not supported. So, basically, this last case, you play Mac Mall. You're not going to be upgrading your NASA sites today. Much of you have any NASA folks here today. But uh, if you have a small site, you could definitely update it today. If you have computer modules, please update them this time. Yeah, I would really love to. Next time I run this, have all the file modules, at least update. If other people come, that's fine. I don't have to play myself there. So, yeah, so I'm adding this next module. Can I have another question? There's a Shortcut that you can use for issue queues, and you just go Drupal slash I slash and then the issue number. So yeah. you don't have to know what project it's attached to, it'll just take you directly to that issue. So uh, yes, uh, there's a, as I just mentioned, in case anyone could hear, there's a Drupal.org shortcut. You can just do Drupal.org slash I slash issue number to get straight to the issue. You don't have to know what the project is, it'll just work. I personally I do know this shortcut, but I almost always just do slash node and slash number because it's the exact same number. Um, I just automatically type slash node because it's beautiful. Um, I, it's not so large. Any other questions? Yes. So, I mean, normally you'd be looking at the module, seeing if there's a new major version that isn't in your constraint, instead of just Yes, uh, definitely check if there's a new major version. Composer updated, you're absolutely grateful for that. Uh, for the first module here, I did go to Drupal.org slash project slash classy, saw the last release was 2022, so clearly no new versions there. 
which are updating this definitely not. Yeah, you did get the uh, composer outdated command or the artwork either way is great. Drupal.org will give you a lot more information about it. if you actually read the issue view of what the status is. Outdated will give you that quick yes or no it's there a uh, great version of it. So this particular website has less than 40 requirements all told, and it's still running into that significant number of models that are updated.
went live. I never get that I was that very efficient on my whole place. They somehow had me enough to not go live on that application this year. <laughs> yeah, any other questions? So this, uh, this reminds me of my experience when we were updating sites to Drupal 10, because whack a mobile, right? Trying to figure out which module of uh, this one. In your experience, limited with Drupal 11 just coming out, uh, what do you think is, or what updates should be harder or more complicated to get done? Drupal 11, 10 and 11, or why is it? So the question is, which update is probably going to be harder? The original Google 9 to 10 experience or the new Google Android experience? Personally, uh, I haven't crunched all the work time. Got them all full effective updates, fully to live that. I do have one site to be that it's on a developing server. I would say that the core update experience is significantly easier in a to do that, but that trip is lagging a bit more than it did with Drupal 10. So Drupal 10, there was some big changes in Drupal 9, especially media library stuff that people were kind of delaying actually doing that thing to from the earlier days. And then when we got to the panel, all people had to actually actually fix so that instead of just looking at it, really validation. So I expect from the first two weeks of Drupal 11 that the core was easier, probably in the next month, the drive will be easier. Today, the drive is harder. Yes? And any questions? Uh, composer, in my opinion, by default, is too verbose. <laughs> I do use verbose in brush commands much more often. Uh, I cannot remember the last time I used verbose on a composer command. I have sometimes said, this is not working, it's taking the default information and switch to a different command and compose switch. Do a composer update and say a composer update or a composer why not. Why not can give you a much less detailed answer but more specific instead of this 300 lines to find that your problem is only mentioned once. So far, every time it's landed here today, it has been within the bottom 10 lines, which is nice. It's not dirty. Uh, for Nito, that is a project I'm mildly familiar enough to be pretty confident that there has been work on it in recent months. So it was released in 2023. So we don't have a compatible version. And there's currently no ticket for a compatible version, which is an oddity. Usually sites get, uh, products get a ticket. Let's see. So I think I will have to mention to Kevin Cullen that this has no Drupal 11 issue. It has a Drupal 10 compatibility issue, but given that Nito is unsupported, it may never be released. That is a possibility with any module. A uh, good example of that is Google Analytics. It is uh, no longer support. It recommends you switch to Google Tag Manager, so if you're using Google Analytics, you probably need to switch to that. 
if people are going to do that. I mean, from the good side, good on the letters, it's no longer happy with my letters because I like to change things every six months or two years later. That's advertising. Yeah. 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 Yeah